responding to Alex in that if someone starts up a virtual machine out of band, meaning, you know, the, they just call Versh and, uh, and launch a, an instance for an, uh, on, on the compute host, there is a time period that the Nova compute doesn't know about that. Um, uh, and uh, placement would not either. So, yeah, I think that that same issue will exist with someone calling the Cyborg API directly as opposed to via the Nova integration. I hope that answers your question, Alex. <laughs> or uh, maybe Alex isn't on the call yet. I don't know. He's, a, he's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's Keith just... It's all right. I'll, 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 all over I'll, the place. Uh, I'll discuss it with him on IRC. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving on. Um, so again, do we, uh, given all the pre uh, previous discussion, do we still need like a new API on the claim release based upon the previous discussions on Cyborg? If you know OSACC was supposed to do much of the the, the, the the claim release functionality proposed here, then I think we should just do it uh, in OSACC library. I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, then moving on to the next. Uh, what is the next item? Uh, the one the sender wants to discuss about the waiters. Uh, no, no, no. The, just go over the the current. The yeah, Etherpad on the POC. So the image cache path. Uh, I don't have any like problem with this. So. I think we we discussed several uh, several times before, right? Using a temporary you know, local cache for image so that we don't, you know, every time go to some, somewhere to fetch the image. Well, shall we put into slash 10 instead of slash four? Uh, you, your volume is low again. <laughs> Sorry, so shall we put into slash 10 instead of slash four? My question. I think more broadly, if you have an image cache, you'll have all the issues with caches, right? You have to make sure it's still fresh, <laughs> not in staleness, aging, and all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe it's good to first validate how much time it actually takes to download an image. It depends on where it's located. If it's somewhere within close to the cluster, if it's downloading from, let's say, some NF or something like that, maybe it doesn't take that much time. It shouldn't take long, right? In my opinion, it's just. Sorry, I can't hear. It, should, it shouldn't take long. I, I mean, download, yeah. downloading that image shouldn't take long. Yeah, yeah. it really shouldn't. I mean, <laughs> these aren't exactly big images, right? That are being. Yeah. Compared with a uh, a VM Im image. Right. I mean, we're talking a couple orders of magnitude smaller, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would I would argue that this is Dutch. I would argue that. We need to think about pre-caching images because if you want to call multiple accelerator, you know, multiple reprogrammable bit streams that are mm -hmm. um, to be called in the, you know, library, mm -hmm. we need to think in the future, maybe not immediately, about how we can do that uh, in a pre-cached fashion so that it doesn't affect the, the runtime latency. So, Dutch, how big are these um, images typically that get flashed to a slot? 50 to 100 megabytes. Yep. So tiny then, right? I mean, well, I mean, if you're thinking tiny, about, yeah. you know, even gigabit I mean, networking when, on. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about like millisecond latency when we're, when we're programming. So. The broader question would be around security, right? If somebody's worried about security at rest and in flight, and if it's guaranteed to be at rest only in one place, that's one thing. If you're going to cache it in every single compute node, how do we ensure that 
uh, all those copies are also secure. That's a, that's a good point. Is it cast on uh, every compute node? But I, re I remember that uh, we discussed the, uh, th this image is, could be encrypted in some way, right? Mm -hmm. And they only be uh, decrypted when it's being loaded by, uh, <laughs> by Cyborg. So the cyber stores the key somewhere securely, and then yes, that key to uh -huh. decrypt it uh, when it was needed. So sure, I'm, I'm not too worried about the physical location like being insecure because, yeah. Uh, first of all, it's a well-controlled uh, environment. Second of all, it could be encrypted, so I'm not too worried about that. It. Okay, um, it would still make sense to make the limit the number of physical copies because it could be encrypted, but if you get a copy of it, then or if it leaks out, it's a matter of time before hacker gets to it, right? I mean, we are getting into the arcane detail of security here, but if there's a, the, unless there's a compelling need, why would you want to create copies? Maybe just a thought, we should and keep that in mind for the future. Mm, sure, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about hackers getting access. I mean, this is on your on your host, right? So, if somebody has access to that, then then you have uh, you know bigger problems than just getting a pre-compiled binary. Uh, you know, there's nothing in that binary that you can actually use. It's already pre-compiled. But, but you know, you, you can't disassemble it. So what would be the conclusion for item four? I think we should validate the actual latency of downloading an image so we can use right. a cache if necessary. But other well, in my opinion, by design, right? This, the, even this path is really like vendor specific, right? Because the only people that uses this path is, is the vendor driver, right? So the vendors, to figure out their own ways on like where to put this stuff. So I mean, yeah, we could agree on some common locations, but like I, I mean, this is just up to the vendors. Okay. It's the only user. No, I don't know. I I think it should be a little better controlled because otherwise you're gonna have. I mean, you could have an Intel on a silence on a on a similar system. You want to go look at the the bit streams. Um, you know, you don't want to have to go hunting around inside the vendor driver code to try to figure out where they're actually putting it. I mean, if it's in temp, then it's, you can just pretty quickly find it. But you can, I think we can kind of require this. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, we, we could agree on some common locations. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I need to drop off now. Um, just want to say thanks for uh, uh, to Xiaohe and, and Howard and Yong, I guess, uh, for the demo. It's appreciated. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. See you. See ya. Okay, so uh, next item five. Pull the image info and update the placement. That must be agent, right? How how can count doctor be in the picture here? But the 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 the, the interaction with the placement, we said that would be the conductor's responsibility, right? So agent well, pull well, the I mean, download the download the images should be agent, right? But the the one that updates the placement will be like would be the count doctor. Yeah. Uh, so, Dover, uh, what what is the like the question five? Yeah. So current, currently, we use uh, uh, agent to pull the image info and update the placement. So, um, I think uh, 
uh, both an agent and a conductor is okay. But now sure we should use more better. Well, I think I think we should just put into two places. Right? You know, agents should take care of downloading the images and and then the conductors is the one that contacts the placement. So there's basically two two tasks, right? Doing by two different uh, parties. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, you mean agent to put the image and the conductor to do the uh, placement interaction? Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Uh, next item uh, is Julie here. Julie. No, I don't see. Him. Uh, does kind of the support the feature? Okay. Wait. What? What? Why do you have this question? I mean, uh, why the conductor has anything to do with filter yeah. PJ devices? I just. Uh, currently, um, in the POC, I. Get all um, FPGA devices and filter um, them by what uh, filter them one, one by one. Um, so I think uh, there should be a, a DB interface to get uh, that are that are expected um, FPGA devices. For example, you can you can see the uh, you can see this. Uh, uh, this API uh, claim uh, um, FP devices uh, the, the require uh, user name is the same girl, uh, uh, I, see, I see what you mean. You mean like uh, you mean there's a, a it's like database APIs for for you to do the filtering, for like basically yeah, a yeah. query API, right? Yeah. So. Um, you will see this API in my in my uh, uh, in my patch that I just uh, submit last night. Uh, you can do you can use that API for for your work. Okay, that's great. It's, it's, yeah, it's really convenient to use. Uh, it's, I put in my um, uh, comment message on how to use it. You can uh, take a look at it. Okay. Good. Okay, let's go to the uh, backup discussion. I think we covered the first two. What, uh, what about the third question? Normalized uh, requires uh, this uh, in flavor. I think I think we can skip this one. Uh, oh, okay. John okay. has uh, put all okay. the questions above. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then uh, I think. We uh, basically go over the POC. Uh, Thanks, Shao okay, uh, and Dover. Yeah. Uh, uh, a minute, uh, uh, maybe uh, the 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 four uh, the five term is not a discussed. Uh, uh, so you can see the image program is synchronized uh, synchronized addition at present. Oh, okay. Item four. Okay. Image. Okay. Yeah, item four. The image program is synchronized. Uh, what do you mean by that? It's synchronized. So, so you are uh, blocked, right? Waiting for the image. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know. Uh, do you know how? Uh, how long it uh, it will take to program a uh, uh, image? Oh. Well, in our design, um, um, we have a similar implementation for programming, right? We make it a blocking cost such that uh, it will stop there because it will take, it will be really fast in my opinion. In, uh, and then most of the applications will just wait for, we wait for it to be ready to just like keep re executing anyways. So we put it into as a uh, uh, synchronous. 
but because uh, if you put it as async, then you need another call to to send the acknowledgments anyways. Yeah, I agree. I I, I think the, the 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 programming should be uh, synchronized uh, operation. So if, if that fails, like everything should fails. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, 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 I was wondering, uh, Dutch, uh, do you know a like ballpark figure? Typically, how long it will take to program image? Or Lilio, do you, do you know? I, I don't yeah. know. Like, Dutch might have more uh, experience with that, but yeah. Yeah, it can range depending on the size. You know, if it's like a large, it's a very large image, then it can take, you know, two seconds. If it's you know, small that it takes less than a second, millisecond. So yeah. it, it varies. Like this, like it's not even noticeable. So I mean, should it be a big issue? Yeah, that, that, that should be tolerable. Okay, we have one question from the uh, audience. Uh, could you guys give uh, like an overview of the difference between the POC code and the uh, cyborg? Uh, upstream code was it like like what are the 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 the, the major difference? Where are where are the major difference? Uh, Shahe or Dofer? Uh, sorry, I. Uh, pardon. Uh, so uh, the the question is, uh, can you summarize the major difference between the POC code and the cyborg up, uh, upstream code? Okay, so um, So you you can uh... so 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 that would be like um, uh, programming, right? That's that's not in the upstream right now. Yeah. Uh, claim release API. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, I I have uh, put a POC. Uh, at the end of uh, uh, lines, which the cyber upstream upstream still haven't. Uh, so, okay. Uh, the uh, uh, that that's uh, at the time uh, like two weeks or three weeks ago when we begin to do this. Like the uh, cyber agent to uh, call placement ABI to create the resource class and the inventories and the uh, image handling, the uh, okay, so yeah, the uh, cyber API, yeah, yeah. The, the question was from uh, Michael. So uh, the the to to summary the major difference is like the F, uh, FPGA programming, uh, the the, the claim, uh, claim release also interaction with clients about the image, uh, yeah stuff like that. Okay, I'm not sure if Michael getting it. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, thank you very much for the summary, that's great. Uh, it also helps with integrating towards other alternative FPGAs as well, so very helpful. Okay. Okay, so uh, I will uh, thank, uh, thanks again, uh, Xiaohe and Dofer for, for the POC. And uh, we will send a, a summary uh, after the meeting about a uh, conclusion about the POC, what we use, what we, you know, which to be put where.
Okay. 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 Then let's go to the uh, rocky task assignment. First of all, the first thing on the list is continue uh, discussion of something uh, leftovers about cyborg Nova interaction. So, Xiaohe, can you give me the screen? Yeah. Okay. So, stop share. Okay, so I, I sent out a, a PDG summary last week, last Friday, or, or, or the week before, I can't remember. So anyways, uh, I, I think I tried to capture uh, as much as summary, uh, like from, also from the help of the topic leads, uh, as much as possible. So, uh, Sander, could you like kick off the discussion? Uh, uh, for us about the wear. Hi, Sander, are you here? Sorry, I was on mute. Can you okay. hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So in the PPG discussion, we agreed upon a flow where a cyborg would represent the FPGA components as resource providers or resource classes in the placement API. And then we'd use normal placement API flow, and there would be a cyborg filter or layer, which would subsequently filter or, or prioritize, of course, the allocation candidates. So in the etherpad and in some other discussion at that time, um, we said that the filter or the layer could query into cyborg. It's actually captured in etherpad. There's also some discussion at the same time around whether that's a good thing to do, whether it'll take too much time and so on. Uh, so the, what I'm trying to say is uh, we need to probably validate the time it actually takes. It probably would not be that much if we make sure that the placement API is properly used to limit the number of allocation candidates. So the where qu querying into Cyborg API should not be too much of a problem. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have some uh, uh, some questions. So who, like, uh, uh, which part of Nova will be invoking the where on Cyborg side? This is a standard, uh, we'll be providing a custom where in the standard way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it be just the a custom where which Cyborg provides is calling the Cyborg API. So no scheduler is a standard filter and where mechanism, right? Just using that. Yeah, uh, this is Ed Leaf. I just wanted to also add that uh, the wayer is called once per host. So if you have uh, if you have many hosts with uh, with uh, accelerators, it's going to be very slow. So doing it in a wayer is probably not Yeah, that's what I remembered from the PDG's discussion. But um, I'm trying to find that uh, no our discussion either pad. So the last line that said the cyborg is the one source of truth, we should consult that. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, what was discussed is like, for example, cyborg uh, uh, vendors, you know, uh, uh, have a product that integrating Cyborg who have their, uh, you know, implementation of a wayer. Uh, and uh, it is like, it's up to the vendor to, 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 to decide if they can uh, optimize the, the performance or, or whatever. But it was suggest that uh, at least in the community version, uh, a wear a, a uh, add a custom wear in Nova uh, might not be a good idea. So uh, 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 I don't know. It's uh, uh, I think that 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 was like the conclusion from the PDG right ad. 
Yeah, that was the general um, general thing. One, because it, the calling would be slow, and two, because even if you selected a, a host that didn't have uh, the correct program on there, it was a relatively lightweight process to um, flash that program. You know, to, to do that, it wouldn't be uh, prohibitive. Okay. Uh, we are not doing any programming of the FPG at this point, right? Just to weighing. I'm missing something. I'm actually referring to line 56 of the ether pad. Um, I copy it in the chat here. Okay. Um, open it. Uh, 50, 53? Okay, here. 56, yeah. So uh, this is achieved by querying Cyborg, which is the one true resource here. Uh, which one, 53? No, 58. 56. 56. 56. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's you know, the following uh, also says this is optimization, right? And uh, hopefully like other ways, if we well, can, yeah. Uh, how, how about put this wires instead of in Nova, like put it in the cyborg, how does it uh, look like? Sorry, what's the question again? <clears throat> I mean, we are trying to put these wires inside of Nova, right? For the Nova scheduling. Right. So, so the, the, the downside of putting a wire in Cyborg is what Alex and I have been mentioned about the two level scheduling. Uh, right. Yeah, this is something I like desperately want to avoid. I see. Yeah. I discussed with Alex as well, and we agree that it kind of depends on how it's done. Mm -hmm. Is Alex online here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I talk about Sunda with this. Um, I, I, with my terrible English, I, I don't, re, I don't remember what say in PDG, but uh, in my memory, uh, the Nova won't accept uh, uh, external call in the in a wear, so. That's why I know the, the, the principal design in NOAA. So if people want to do something out of a tree, I think NOAA doesn't care about that. If we want to that in tree NOAA, maybe we should check with the others in the NOAA team to ensure that people accept that. Yeah, so, uh, but, uh... like as I commented on the sender's document before, uh, I do think this is a very legit requirement, like to using a wear for uh, like filtering out the, 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 the functions that actually the, the workload or virtual machines need. Uh, so since, you know, putting wear in the uh, uh, community version of Nova uh, is is like not preferred. And also if we put in wear in Cyborg community version might cause like uh, the, the, the two level scheduling problem. If we were to allow, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, if we were to allow uh, like vendor implementation of uh, uh, like custom wares, for example, in Cyborg, if the vendor choose to do so, are there any like additional APIs or functionalities we need to introduce to support that? So I'm trying to understand this covered. So why do you say it's a two level scheduling? Basically the way it was envisioned was that the placement yeah. API gives you a list of allocation candidates we just pass them to Cyborg, we just filters it out or waste them, right? 
So it's calling into Cyberbot not for additional scheduling, just working with the placement API returned candidates. Yeah, I also confused that. I don't think there will be two levels scheduling or not based on the where entry or not. You're talking about where is in the cyborg case, in right? Cyborg. So the because yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. the the two level thing I mentioned is because if we put that into production, it means if the where in the cyborg fails, it will we will need to like have a way to inform the placement, right? Because the, the uh, complex or not, where is doing so some where, sort of, of filtering, right? Yes, so where yeah. won't fail. So, so where only order the, the, the list of host. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that um, placement is called to just filter out all machines that don't meet the requirements, that don't have the, the requested hardware. Uh, the weigher is just used to sort by preference. So in other words, you might prefer something that is already programmed uh, with the correct, with the, with the desired program, but it doesn't yes. figure anything out. Yeah. And that's why um, Nova doesn't know anything. Nova doesn't know anything about going through each host in order to uh, weigh them would mean a separate call to cyborg for each host that's what, uh, that's what the the burden is that's what the slowdown would be i don't think of it as an optimization if it's much if it's pretty lightweight to reprogram an fpga then that would probably be way faster Okay, so in that sense, then maybe we could put a wire in Cyborg, right? I would actually uh, like to see a, like a flow diagram of this because it's getting to the point where it's hard to visualize all the different, you know, flows. And so I actually, I can't be constructive because I don't know what's, you know, what the proposals are. So I don't know, Sundar, if you can put together, you know, because uh, some flow diagram and we can we can review it because we have multiple sure. multiple flows and uh, It's not clear exactly how they flow or suggest to flow yep. yes, Jinder, uh, I, Yeah, I, I think you can just submit this back uh, into cyborg for the moment and uh, 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 Just for for adding a wire in cyborg. I think at least the this direction uh, I'm okay with. So then we can, you know, further review it on, on Garrett. So, okay, uh, what does it mean to add a way to Cyborg? It's still fitting into Nova's standard flow, right? It's still calling one host at a time. We need some way where Nova pass all the allocation candidates to Cyborg in one shot. Let Cyborg do the weighing and get the results back. Yeah, I think that, that, yeah. yeah, I think that's what uh, Howard is saying. But but uh, according to Ed, right? He, he you, you mentioned that since the uh, reprogramming was like so fast, we we don't even why do we even bother to to wait this? I mean, uh, that's that, I agree with that point. Like, why not just uh, keep it simple for now? Is just 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 program it. Uh, based on what the user wants, right? Because it's pretty fast. The cost of reprogramming can vary a lot, for one thing. So in comparison to filtering and weighing, it's not clear to me at least which one is way out. I, I would assume that something like weighing would, uh, if it's properly done, be out of hundreds of microseconds perhaps, or maybe even a millisecond perhaps. But the programming could be higher. That's one aspect. Second aspect is you may want to minimize reprogramming for whatever reason, right? Like you may want to say that uh, certain hosts are locked down. I would not reprogram ever or something like that. It depends on the cloud operators' use cases. So uh, yeah, we're only providing mechanisms here, right? Not policies. 
Well, yeah, I, I seek your point, but uh, the other way to look at this is like if you're a, uh, if you're giving a user a preloaded FPGA, and this preloaded bitstream was programmed by some some other user, and he has been using it for some time, mm -hmm. um, right? So, if I'm the user, I rather have you fresh, like give me a fresh one instead of someone like some left over ones from others right why not just of course. Yeah, for, yeah, for, for security reasons because in, in, in the FPJ there's memory there are memory modules and and all, all those stuff that might be left over over there if they say uh, uh not so well designed uh like this tree. yeah yeah so no matter which model you follow yes there will always be some kind of a cleanup when you transfer a FPGA device from one tenant to another. However, in orchestration driven programming, it's OpenStack which is doing the programming. The cyborg itself is doing that. In that case, the cyborg knows that IPsec has already been programmed, let's say, into one particular device, it's, it's free to reuse it for some other tenant, right? The programming was done by uh, cyborg itself. You may need to do some reset or some cleanup, of course. Will not be a total reprogramming of the entire function, though. So, so Sundar, let me get this straight because we have the fixed function accelerator, right? Which is a not reprogrammable thing, and and I was thinking it would be kind of selected by the placer, but I could be off there. And then we had the reprogrammable accelerator, and that was something that would be checked or reprogrammed every time. Is this a hybrid of the two, or is it? The second, the latter, or the former, I'm not exactly sure. Because basically the vendor driver should go over the FP, you know, if it gets an FPGA and it already has, you know, it, it's given a command to program this bitstream uh, image, whatever, it'll go and check the, like it could go and check on the, you know, on the FPGA what's currently programmed. If it's already programmed, it just skips it. So it skips the programming step. And so that's that's one way to do it in the in the in the second flow. But that's why I'm just not confused. So we're I mean I'm confused about I'm not sure exactly which way we're going here. If we're if we're going it could be programmed and we want it if it's programmed, if it's not programmed, we program it, because that becomes a lot trickier than just saying it's either not programmed or it's programmed. It, it's the first thing you mentioned because uh, the case we're considering now is the one where you try to reuse the functions that are already available, otherwise go and reprogram that. It's the orchestration itself is doing the programming. And uh, if it knows that some functions are already available and it's going to be costly to reprogram it from scratch, you may want to just uh, reuse what's already there. You may do a reset or cleanup for security reasons. Don't have to reprogram from scratch, though. Well, anytime uh, an FPGA is reprogrammed, it should be cleaned. Like, there's no concept of like a dirty FPGA in the in like the ideal flow. Now, we support many different flows, right? So, if somebody goes out and does their own thing, but I'd say in the cloud flow, there's no dirty FPGA. It's, it's always going to get refreshed. Everything's going to be cleaned. Um, there's going to be a clearing bitstream and everything that gets programmed onto it to clean it up. So, so does does the clearing happen? after the usage of the BGA or before it's being assigned to another user? Um, it's variable. Um, it can be set by the cloud vendor. Mm -hmm. So most of the time it's after. The FP, you know, after the, the, you know, 